there it goes. Shooting into space. It really does leap off the launch pad. Really does, doesn't it? It's very, very fast. It was a little bit cloudy there, so uh, we didn't get to see the rocket for a very long time, but uh, the actual launch itself, I could see exactly what you mean. There's our Russian colleagues here in the commentary box just following the uh, mission there. Just monitoring events here from the Mission Control Center. We are at the European Space Operations Center in Darmstadt. So these are the people here at Plesetsk. Do we know what they're doing, Philippe? Well, at the moment, uh those are the people from the satellite team and uh, basically well the satellite is uh, being uh, pushed by the rocket so they don't have that much to do except to rejoice as you can see uh, from uh, uh, being uh, lift up and uh, in the air so we're coming up to the point here where we have the scheduled first stage separation Separation of the first part of the launcher. It's burnt its propellant and it can fall back down to earth because, of course, the whole point is to lose weight because the lighter we are, the faster we go. It's a basic law of physics. And the fairing that's at the front of the launch vehicle, the pointy bit there, that's where our satellite is housed. That's been protecting us up until now, and we don't need it anymore because we are technically on the edge of space. So we're about 100 kilometers above the Earth. It's called the Kármán line. It's where space begins. And we can see your satellite, guys, for the first time there. Daniel, can you explain what we're looking at? Yeah, so... We're now outside of the atmosphere, so we don't need the fairing anymore. Um, we're just in the last wisps, and it won't affect the uh, spacecraft anymore. So the, the second stage will be firing. Um, to continue that push to get high and also to get very fast, the, the secret orbit is to go quickly. And here, just for anybody who's unfamiliar with a, a launch, what you're looking at is the... A remainder there on the left-hand side of the launch vehicle and then on the right is the uh, satellite Sentinel 5P. <coughs> Philippe, your baby yes, heading indeed. into space. Uh, we, oh, uh, yes. we see it there on the screen. It's an animation. These uh, images are not these images are what's planned, basically, for, for the flight. They're CGI images, uh, computer-generated images. The experts put all the information into the computer and... Indeed, we cannot see the, the spacecraft and the launcher in itself. Uh, but this is a, indeed a very good uh, representation of what's going on at this very moment uh, following, the, following the flight sequence. So we are now uh, in, the, let's say, towards the end of the second stage uh, uh, burn. It will uh, soon separate and uh, uh, will uh, then uh, continue, or let's say the flight sequence will then continue after a, a slight cruise uh, with a burn of the third uh, stage that we see up there. So we can now see the second stage switching off its engine because it's now burnt its fuel and mm -hmm. it can separate and uh, we can shed more weight and of course the reason for these first two stages is to get us away from Earth's gravity. We need an awful lot of firepower to push us away. And you can see now we are switching on the upper stage. It's called Breeze. Just like the Breeze. It's a very special piece of kit because it's like our taxi driver. It's taken the wheel and it can take us pretty well anywhere we want to go in space. Can you tell us a, bit, a little bit about that, Daniel? Well, it's a fascinating bit of kit in its own right. It really is 
its own spacecraft. It's autonomous, um, it, it doesn't need constant ground control, and it will follow the flight program that was programmed into it on the launch pad. It's got its own tracking systems and guidance and navigation. Can we start its engines multiple times, up to eight times, I think, um, to make sure that the spacecraft goes into just the right orbit? Because, of course, each spacecraft has, has to go to a different orbit, Philippe. Well, indeed, yes. Uh, even if we have a... It's a bit like the uh, aerial route. Uh, we do have our favourite tracks, but, uh, yes, it's... Uh, uh, each spacecraft has to be delivered uh, exactly where it is. In our case, we're going uh, 824 kilometers. Uh, actually, we'll be delivered slightly below because we want to then fine-tune uh, where we will be uh, because Sentinel-5P will be uh, flying close, we call it flying information, uh, with a, an American uh, satellite so that both spacecraft will benefit from the measures of the others. And so we have to make some sort of rendezvous with that spacecraft. And this will be done by the satellite itself. And so Breeze will uh, deliver us at uh, 814 kilometers, which is 10 kilometers below the final orbit uh, where it will work uh, during its uh, operational life. So we're hurtling out now across space traveling at phenomenal speeds, we need to get to, as you said there, seven kilometers per second. And I believe, in fact, once you fly above the Kármán line, you have to travel at that speed to stay up. Indeed, indeed. This is uh, uh, always quite a lot of energy that it takes, of course, to, to push a one-ton uh, spacecraft to that, uh, to that very high speed. Yeah. 